All right, 100B. You have the following function of two variables. Defined in this way. And our region of integration, our two-dimensional region, is the set omega. And it's the following set of points. It's those x and y um, values in the xy plane such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 and x and y are non-negative. So, one of the um, uh, sort of requirements in your course pack at the start of this section is you need to draw a picture for each question involving double integrals, a picture of the region of integration. So, in this case, we want to sketch the set omega. So, what's the set omega going to be? Um, yeah, it's going to be yeah a quarter of a quarter of a circle, right? So like a it, it's it's like a disc with just one quarter left over. Okay, so if I wanted to sketch this, I could I draw in my circle x squared plus y squared equals one, which will be something like that, and then I realise that x is non-negative and y is non-negative. So. This would be our region of integration. Now, the first thing we would see, uh, we would think for this kind of region, it's a polar rectangle, right? So we would think maybe polar coordinates. But um, I'm not going to start with polar coordinates because they're, they're quite challenging. So I'm just going to do this in the, just the regular way without using polars. Okay? So... Um, so what we need to do is somehow describe this region here. So let's just let i be the double integral of our function over our region omega. Okay, now I'm not going to describe the region omega using polar coordinates. Okay, um, the way I've done it, I've just, this, this curve here is going to be y equals 1 minus x squared. Uh, root 1 minus x squared. So what I can do is just draw, say, this vertical line. The vertical line enters the region at y equals 0 and it exits the region omega at root at y equals root 1 minus x squared. So, in terms of our, our description of omega, in terms of, um, you know, I guess bounding functions, y is going to be greater than or equal to 0 but less than root 1 minus x squared. What about the x, the x um, bounds? What are they going to be? Yeah, 0 to 1. So all I need to do is take this vertical line and shift it and see how far I need to go along the x-axis to cover the entire quarter disk. So it would be between 0 and 1. Okay, so now what we want to do is put this into a double integral. We know that we can use Fubini's theorem to write i as a repeated integral. So by Fubini's theorem, i is just the following iterative integral. Remember the constants go, go on the outside. Now, 
now. Is it dy dx or dx dy? Dy dx, because y is with, between these two functions and then on the inside. Okay, so it's not that hard to integrate now. You do the inside integral first. So you imagine every, all the x's are constants, you integrate with respect to y, plug in the limits of integration. Then you move to the outside integral, integrate everything with respect to x. So let's do this. So if I integrate with respect to y here, I'm going to get x squared y squared on 2. This is going to go to y to the 4th on 4. Okay. So now I need to sub in my limits of integration. Well, when I sub in y equals 0, this is obviously going to be 0. And when I sub in root 1 minus x squared, I notice that the square root sign is going to disappear. Because I've got y squared there, that'll take care of the square root sign, and y to the power 4. So, if I substitute this in, I should get something like the following. I'll get x squared 1 minus x squared all over 2 plus 1 minus x squared all squared over 4 dx. So all I need to do now is expand the brackets and uh, or, or simplify it in some way. And I, I've, all I've got now is a single integral. Okay, so um, according to my calcs, you, uh, after the simplification, you'll get something like this. Okay, one quarter minus x to the fourth on four dx. And if you integrate that, you'll get one fifth. 